Yes, and here we have it. Um, here we see that auto tiles have correctly aligned themselves. So by simply using um, an instructional PNG image and a few simple lines of, uh, of codes, we have been able to automatically generate uh, the auto tiles, auto tiles and place them in the correct place. Yes, and now we have a fresh brand new project here. Um, so uh, starting out, I'm going to create um, a new folder just to keep uh, the project organized. Um, resources. In this uh, folder, I'm going to put a tile map, um, a tile, uh, a picture of a tile set, which I have um, from another project. So it looks like uh, this. Um, it is a tile set of many different kind of tiles, and the top one are from. Uh, OpenGameAssets.org, while the bottom here I created myself, which are the ones that we are going going to use now. So um, then we need to get started. So let's create a 2D scene right there and create a new node. So we need a tile map. That yes. The tile map need a tile set, so let's create a new tile set uh, and uh, save. So we can just call it whatever. Um, yes, and just take the tile set picture and just drag it down. Would you like to automatically create tiles in the atlas? Yes. So now it automatically finds out where its uh, tile uh, is going to be. See? So if we're going to do this manually, we could do that. Go by tile set, click on the one you want and just place them. Now, uh, this is not what you want. We want it, first of all, we want it uh, automatically and by code. So step one is to create uh, some rules to by using the auto tile function, which define what tile fits next to to what. So um, let's go on the tile set, and we need to um, define terrains. So let's create a terrain set. Um, these are the matching rules. So I use match corner and sides. Um, so we can have one that we call for all grass, or you can call it ground actually. And uh, this is just the color we will be using to mark, to mark the tiles with. So I advise to use something that's very different from the tiles that we actually we're actually going to mark. So we get nice a nice contrast. So it's easy to work with. It's not going to be visible in the game, so don't think about that at all. Um, Take another element, let's call it uh, C. Take that uh, the green, that will go nice against the uh, the blue, or orange actually, orange. All right. <clears throat> and now back to tile set. And go to the paint and select properties. We're going to select the terrain. So we'll go to terrain set zero, uh, terrain uh, ground. Um, so first, also, we need to click on the like just mark them so they get lightened up just to show that these are the, these are the tiles we're going to work with. And now we're going to define the match corner and side rules. Um, exactly how this works, there are better explanations out there, better videos than, than mine. So, but briefly, it just um, this is how you just define which tile goes uh, next to the other one. Um, 
So now I'm just going to fill it out. Like so. Um, Now that should be the ground that should cover every possible placement scenario. So we can also take the C for that one. I'm just going to use this. So if now I go back to the tile map, and then we should have the different terrains here. So let so just to test if it works at, as we want wanted to, just try to draw some ground, and we can see okay. Uh, Not perfect with uh, right here. Uh, okay, then we have to go back and fix it. Okay, that was the ground. Now we have it. I think that was the cause of it. Let's uh, go back and check. It's better we still have like one error there where we, if we go all the way out, then it sticks up there. So I think that this we did the same mistake here. Okay. Tile map back now. Yeah. See, now it works. And we didn't define any rules for the C, just like one tile, so it is what it is. All right. Now that we have the tile map in place, we need to create some instructions for Godot. Let's create the instructional image uh, for the auto tiles. Um, so for this, you can use any graphical software you want. Uh, I choose to use Krita, which is open source. So it kind of fits like the whole Godot team with excellent open source software. So I'm just going to create a new image. So um, 400 by 400 pixels. Take a background. Um, let's see. Let's uh, take the. What is important uh, when you choose a software is that you have access to the color code because we are going to use that one to uh, in our code later to choose the correct tile. So I'm actually going to take a, a note of uh, this, that, that this will be the blue color for the C. So um, back in Godot, just create, uh, create a new script. Give the, the top pair like a little cheat sheet. All right. Again, um, let's take another color, uh, take a bright green, uh, and let's find uh, the brush. Now, um, it is very important that you actually choose the pixel brush because if you have some color gradient or shading, this it won't work. You need the clear color. 
Um, let's see. Where is my faithful uh, pixel brush? size on it. Also, before I forget, let's note down this color. Okay, just control to save it. So. Draw an island. Um, yeah. We could also maybe have like a little lake in the lake in the middle. Here. Um, also, I think a, a little river will be, will be nice. So, like a river like this. A bit, a bit bigger, actually. Oh. All right, I think that is enough for uh, to prove the point. Back in Godot again, we can see that the um, image we just made is imported and now in the res resources folder. Um, so now we need to assign it. So let's go back to Node 2D and create a sprite, sprite 2D. Take the sprite and use the import image as a texture. And now we can already see it in the 2D scene, but we need to process this image through some code. So let's go back to our script um, and create a new function. Function will be called uh, call it load terrain. First, need to specify the image or our image. Then we just drag the sprite so we get the reference to the sprite node. And then. Picture and then need to get the image. So, and then we're going to create a dictionary. And the dictionary is going to hold um, and use the the um, color values as the dictionary the dictionary keys. And the values will be all the coordinates on the picture where those color values are present. So let's create a pixel color dictionary. Pixel color dict. So and now we need to loop through this whole picture. So we create a for loop. and uh, height then we need to look to the x-axis the pixel color variable pixel color 
it's going, going to be a string. So uh, first I'm going to put a uh, hashtag. The reason is that I want it in the same format as the color because um, standard Godot gives without it. So I just like, like to keep it uh, the same. So. Image dot get pixel uh, at the coordinates and coordinate x and y and to HTML false. Now this will give us a pixel, the pixel color at the coordinate in the format that we want. So now we're going to put that value in the dictionary. Um, but first we need to check if it's already there. So we just create the if. Mm, no, not, the, not in, it's the correct syntax. Uh, so now we will check if the pixel color, if the pixel color is not already in the dictionary, we will create a new uh, key of with that color. We just append it to the end of the already existing. See if this works. So let's uh, this function in inside the ready function. So it will launch as soon as we launch the script. Um, and as a control, let's just print uh, the dictionary just to see. Ah, I forgot to declare these functions. All right. Yes. So, not like easy to see what it is, but um, this is all the coordinates for. Uh, yeah, so you can see this is the key for C. So there is C in pixel at coordinate 1, 1, and no, 0, 0, and 1, 0, and 2, 0, and so on. Um, Yes. So now that we see that this works, then let's try to use it for the terrain. Okay, now let's uh, use that dictionary to assign the tiles to the tile map. So I'm going to still use the same uh, low terrain function that we created. So I'm going to drag myself a reference to the tile map. So I'm um, going to use function called set cells terrain connect. Um, so I'm going to use one layer, so it's layer zero. And the location we find in our dictionary. So 
Let's just copy it, pixel color dictionary. Uh, and we need to define now uh, which key to feed in. So uh, what kind of terrain will we start with? So let's start with the grass. So this is the key. Bring up key like this, and just put it on the back there. So just so we so we remember what uh, kind of tile we want to assign. Um, next values is terrain set. It's only one, so zero, and this is terrain number one, which is the grass. And uh, zero, I mean like the first one. So we can see that on our. Um, uh, let's go to the tile set. So uh, the first one is uh, number zero and then number one, which is the C. Uh, yeah, uh, let's do the same thing for the C tiles. So we take the color code from for the C. And since this is zero and then one, then we need to take number one. Now that should be it. So let's uh, try and take it for a spin. Okay, uh, we see that there that some C tiles are there. Uh, we don't yet see anything uh, with the grass, so I just need to take in a car camera so we can see it uh, from um, further away. So let's do that. Turn the camera to the. And also, I want to actually. Uh, after this is run, we don't need that uh, the time map anymore, so we can uh, remove it. Okay. It's the sprite we want to get rid of. Yes, and um, to be able to properly look around the time map uh, after we launched, I just added a quick script to make a simple um, top down to the camera. So um, if you want to zoom, just the code, the code is right here. So it's simple for zoom in and out and also so you can drag it around by using, by holding the mouse key and uh, drag the camera around. So let's now check what we got. Yes, and here we have it. Um, here we see that auto tiles have correctly aligned themselves. So by simply using um, an instructional PNG image and a few simple line of, uh, of codes, we have been able to automatically generate uh, the auto tiles, auto tiles and place them in the correct place. Yes. Uh, if you like this tutorial, then please uh, like and subscribe. If not, then uh, please tell me what uh, I can do better. And uh, for all of you, have a nice day and thank you for watching. Bye.